Hello and welcome to our garden on what is a fairly chilly and windy February morning. Um, and we're going to look at nest boxes today. Normally in a, a, a normal year, should we say, we would be able to run events where people could come along and make a nest box to take back and put up in their garden or maybe put up in the local park. Uh, but obviously this isn't a normal year, so we're going to just run you through some of the nest boxes that we could make um, and what they're what they're for and where to put them. Uh, so we're going to run through uh, that. Now, if you've got some wood lying around the garden or within the house, you might be able to use that to make a nest box. Uh, we've actually got though a kit that we've picked up, so these are quite easy to find. Um, and this one here is for uh, smaller birds like blue tits. Um, and so yeah, like blue tits, they've got a, a whole small hole size, so 25 millimeters. Let's see if we can find a front there. So there we go. So there's the hole that the bird will, get, the bird will go in and out of. Now that's a hole nesting nest box uh, for those sorts of birds, but we've also got other boxes as well. We made. This is an open fronted box, and this is the sort that things like robins would like to nest in. Um, we've also got uh, a, an insect box as well. So this is one that uh, little bees might come and nest in. So we've got an open space here which we can fill full of uh, little tube like material, so bits of bamboo, bits of rolled up uh, cardboard might do as well. We could put leaves and twigs in there. And then in the top, here we go, in there, this could be the sort of place that insects might overwinter, things like lace wings, and we've filled that with cones, but we could put straw, grass, leaves in there as well. So that's an insect box. This one is a different shape to all the others, and this is for bats. Now, there's no hole in the top or the sides on this one. The hole here is on the bottom. You can see here there's some little grooves that the bats will be able to crawl into. Crawl, crawl into it from. We'll just take the front off, or take the lid off, the front. We can show you the inside. So inside here, we've got grooves, so the bats will come and land on here, crawl up the inside, and then they can hang on to this piece of wood here in the middle there. So we'll get bats sleeping in here over over the daytime and then they'll come out at night so this one here we need to put up on a high wall somewhere on a, on a house uh, whereas the bird boxes can go into shrubs or somewhere in the garden so we'll look at that shortly now we're going to look at making this bird box here <coughs> and the, the kit comes in bits and all the individual pieces cut up we've got the front with the hole in we've got a base we've got a roof with the curved edges on there two sides, which are angles, and the backboard as well. This kit also comes with all the other bits and pieces that you need to put together. So we've got a little packet with our, our nails in, some nails, and we've also got uh, a screw for the lid as well. So there we go. So we're going to start by just putting this box together. I'm going to get a couple of nails out from there. I'll rest them up there where I can see them. Got my hammer and we start off by putting the sides onto the back now the back on this one here has got a groove cut out for the roof to go into so i'll put those other pieces just down to one side <coughs> so we need the, the tall bit of the slope at the back of the box so let's see if we can do it this way around line that edge up with the bottom of the box there that's just about right get one of our nails now we have to make sure that nail goes right way through this piece of wood and into the back into the side and ideally we don't want it coming out either side so we have to be very careful lining this up that's one <clears throat> get the next one line that up Be careful not to hit our fingers as well. Okay, so that's one piece nailed onto the side there. Let's see if we can get the other one on. Line it up again. Holding the wood nice and steady. There we go. Make sure it stays lined up. One. 
you just have to check it's just lined up before you stick the next nail in. There we go, we've got our two sides nailed on to the back piece already. Next piece to go in would be the base. And the base is going to fit between the two sides. Now it's a bit of a squeeze fit. And you'll see that there are some gaps here left on this one, and that's to let any rain water out that might get into the box. Hopefully, it's going to stay fairly dry there. Where did I put my uh, oven? <laughs> and where I put my nails down. So, put one at the back there. That's our base nailed on now, so we need to put the front on. So remember we said the front was the piece with the hole in, and on this one, the hole needs to go at the top. So we're going to put the front on like that there. So let's get a few more of our nails out of the bag. Be careful not to drop them on the floor. Lining up nice and square again. More of a tap to get started. I'm put one on this side. I need to make sure it's nice and square. <clears throat> on the box now. We've now got the box more or less together. The last thing to do is going to be to put the lid onto the box. Now the lid remember we said have got these curved edges to the front and there's also a little angle there as well cut at the back and that's going to fit on this kit is going to fit into that slot on the backboard. So we put that in there and then we've got the screw that was supplied to the top and we're going to screw the lid down. Now we don't need to put any nesting material into the box because the birds will be finding their own materials to build the nest inside there. But at the end of the year, so when we get through to maybe uh, October or November later this year, it's a good idea just to have a look inside and if they've made a nest, remove the old nesting material and that way we don't get a build up of lots of pests in there that might uh, harm the, the next year's chicks. So we're just going to put the screw at the top, screw that on. just to keep it nice and secure. And there we go, we've got our finished box uh, ready to go up. Now this, this one here is made out of uh, a plywood that's suitable for keeping out, for use outdoors. So it, we can just leave it like this, or we can do what we did with the open fronted box here, which is just give it a coat of a, a water-based wood stain. So the sort of thing you might use on a shed or fences. Um, or if you've got other water-based paints at home, maybe you could paint it with that. Something that's a, a, a matte color or a dull color like this uh, helps the box blend in, but you could always decorate it up with leaf patterns as well to help, help it blend in with the surroundings. The next thing then is to think about where these boxes are going to go. So we need to think about the fact that the birds will want to be somewhere where it's fairly quiet for them to go in and out of the box, somewhere a bit more out of sight. So we normally put these up in a tree, or we could put them up on the end of a building. Uh, <clears throat> there's lots of different places that you can put them, uh, but we try to make sure that they're not in full sunshine all day because it does get very hot in there. What you can do though is you can find some details on uh, the website. If you go to uh, National Nest Box Week, if you search that on the internet, that'll take you to the page and it gives you lots of different details about where to put these boxes up. 
So uh, we'll have a look at where we might put the, the Open Country Fox in a moment, uh, but go and have a look at that website there. Okay, so we've, we've made our nest boxes up and we're going to look at where we're going to put these out. Now, if we were going to put a box like this in the tree, uh, although there's the two holes in the top here, you might be tempted to nail it to the tree or screw it to the tree. And while that's okay, it perhaps isn't the best for the tree in the end. So what we could do is using those two holes there, we could use either something like this garden tie and put that through the holes, or we've got string that we could put through, or we have like some rubber strap that we've used for tree ties or an old inner tube works quite well. Or failing that, if you've got an old elasticated bungee from the car, you can use those. And these give as the tree grows and that's the thing. So at least while the tree's growing and getting bigger, the box isn't going to get pushed off the tree. If you're going to be putting the box onto a, onto a fence or a wall though, it's okay just to screw or nail it straight on. So we've got the Robin box here. And we're going to put that somewhere up in here, in amongst the ivy, and I'm going to screw it to the, uh, the fence post back in there. Or at least I'm going to try. <laughs> Get the other screw in. And there we go, that's that box fixed up somewhere out of the way where the robin will like it with plenty of shelter. Okay, so we've just seen us putting the, uh, the robin box up and in a little while I'm going to put this, uh, this blue tip box up here. Now I'm talking about a blue tip because uh, that's a, one of the smaller of those uh, tip species and it, it uses the smaller hole. This is 25 millimeters across this one here. But we've got other boxes here as well, which I've got a slightly bigger hole for other, other birds. So uh, one that we I've got to make is for a bird called the great tip, which will be another common garden bird that you might see. And here we've got a picture. So we've got the blue tip down here. And the, that's got this bluey gray head with blue collar and, and uh, uh, bits on its wings. And the great tip has this big black and white head with a big black bar down the middle of a bright yellow chest. Now that uses a box that's 32 millimeters. So slightly bigger, it's a bigger bird. Um, so we're gonna make one of those for, for those big birds as well. Now, once your box is up, don't be tempted to keep going and having a look or poking in, the, having a look through the hole in there. Put it somewhere where you can observe it from a distance and just watch to see what's happening. Now, if the birds don't start using it straight away, don't get disheartened because it may take a little time for them to, to discover the box. Uh, and you never know, they, they are quite clever. So they will look out to see whether people are watching or animals are watching, other birds are watching and only go in when they feel it's safe to do so. So you never know, it might still be being used if you don't see them going in out. One of the things that will be a telltale sign though is if you do get them using the box, and the chicks hatch is it'll be very very noisy as they're cheeping away inside. If of course your box is somewhere where it is well tucked away in the garden you might not know that the birds have been in there until maybe you look at the, in the nest box at the end of the year like I say October November time when it's a good time to clean the nest out but the one thing you might find about it in the garden is some of the bits of eggshell as well. Now once the chicks have hatched the birds will sometimes clean out the nest and take the bits of empty eggshell away so here we've got a picture of what the, the eggs of a great tit would look like. Because they nest in a hole, they've got a quite pale coloured egg, but they often have these little brown speckling all over the top. That's to give them a little bit of camouflage when they're inside those hole nesting boxes. So, uh, like I say, it's National Nest, Box, National Nest Box Week, starting on the 14th of February, uh, which was the traditional date that people thought that birds paired up and started building their nests. nests. So if you've got the opportunity to go out and build a nest box, there are lots of plans available on the internet 
Like I say, check out National Nest Box, uh, the webpage that they've got there, uh, or you can look through and see if you can find yourself a kit uh, if you haven't got the wood available uh, at home. We were just talking about uh, the great tits and the blue tit that we have in the garden. And if you're not sure what birds you have in your garden at all, you might not always see them, but you'll sometimes hear them calling. So the first one we're going to listen out for is the great tit. Hopefully you could just hear that then. It's quite a high pitched sound. Sounds like it's going teacher, teacher. Okay. So that's one of the common garden birds. The other one that we mentioned was the robin. And the robin's got a nice song, very quite lyrical and melodic. Okay, so that's two of the birds that we mentioned there. The other one that we mentioned was the blue tit. Did you hear that? Very high pitch noise, very similar. Now there are lots of other birds that might be nesting in your garden. Uh, some of the bigger birds, uh, one of them might be uh, a blackbird. Another bird, a very similar size to that, is the song thrush. Oh, how many of you were paying attention there? Because that actually was a gold finch there. <laughs> but let's try and get this. I hope you could hear there that all those birds have got lots of different calls so if you might be able to find a book that has the song calls described in them or has got recordings of the sounds or you, you can find uh, little apps on the web as well that will help you identify the bird song in your garden now not everybody has the materials available at home to, to make a, a nest box or you might not have a garden that you could go out and look at for look at birds in but you can of course still go out into the, the local parks so you can go around have a look walk through your local park see what birds you can find if you've got just trees and woodland and hedgerows you'll probably have some of the birds that we've been talking about today if you've got a pond or a lake there you might see lots of other birds as well but they'll all be starting to think about making their nests um, ready for the forthcoming year. Some of them are very specialised as well. So if you've got birds like Greaves, you'll find that they build a floating nest out on the out on the water. So, so like I say, don't forget to go out into your local parks and have a look around there. And again, it's National Nest Box Week starting the 14th of February. Easy to remember, it's Valentine's Day. And they can be found on the web at, nest, at nestboxweek.com.